At Smithfield in London on the 5th of April 1531, a huge crowd had gathered. What they were about to witness was one of the most brutal events in English history. An execution had been announced, and a number of the public would have been too curious to stay away, but this wasn't to be an execution like seen before. The man condemned to death, Richard Roos, was to be boiled alive. This would be one of the most horrific events of Henry VIII's brutal reign over England, in which a chef or cook was boiled alive for allegedly poisoning food. Join us today as we look at the horrific execution of Richard Roos. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Throughout the Tudor period, Smithfield gained a reputation as a site of execution, mostly for the deaths of religious dissenters or heretics. During the reign of Mary I, a number would be burned here at the stake, victims of the religious turmoil which began under the reign of Henry VIII. Roos wasn't a religious criminal, he was convicted of high treason, but not intended to harm the king or the queen, Catherine of Aragon. He hadn't plotted to overthrow the government, but instead he was a simple cook, who was accused of poisoning some of his customers. At the time, cases of deliberate poisoning were rare in England, but there was a genuine fear in the upper classes of food being poisoned. For example, kings and queens would even employ food tasters to sample meals before royalty would eat, just in case poison was present in the dinner. It's important to consider that hygiene wasn't great at this time also, so a case of food poisoning from poor hygiene was more common at this time than by deliberately poisoning with intent to cause harm. On the 18th of February 1531, John Fisher, the Bishop of Rochester, and a number of guests were eating at his house. An Act of Parliament describes the events of that afternoon. On the 18th day of February 1531, one Richard Roos of Rochester, Cook, also called Richard Cook, did cast poison into a vessel full of yeast or baum, standing in the kitchen in the Bishop of Rochester's palace at Lambert March, by means of which two persons who happened to eat the pottage, made with such yeast, died. One of the victims was a gentleman called Bennett Kerwin, and the other was a widow who accepted Fisher's charity, Alice Tripped. It's assumed that Fisher himself was the target of the poisoning, however he did not eat the porridge or soup, and was unharmed as he may have been fasting that evening. Around 17 people from the household who had eaten were violently ill, including members of the dining party that evening, and also the poor who would beg for charity were affected. Richard Fisher, brother of John, ordered the arrest of Roos immediately, who had already escaped the bishop's palace, however he was quickly captured and thrown into the Tower of London. During this time, a wave of panic hit London and Westminster over the incident. It wasn't established who provided Roos with the poison, but some historians claim that Roos was likely to have been a pawn in a bigger game, with someone plotting Fisher's assassination. By the time of this incident, Bishop John Fisher was considered one of the greatest Catholic scholars in Europe, and he was certainly a rival for power against the king, especially with his later reforms on religion, causing the English Reformation. The king did have a possible motive to order the assassination of Fisher, especially as he had previously began his quest for a male heir, and was starting to look for ways out of his marriage with Catherine of Aragon. Fisher became one of Henry's biggest obstacles, and if Fisher was on side, he could possibly have helped to bring about the annulment that the Pope was so against. Fisher would take the side of Catherine over the King, and therefore became an enemy of Henry VIII. Whilst inside the Tower of London, Richard Roos would endure a horrific torture ordeal. He was tortured on the rack, with his limbs being subject to an immense amount of pressure. The rack would induce dislocations with the prisoners' limbs being ripped out of their sockets. During this, Roos admitted to putting what he thought was a laxative, describing it as a certain venom or poison, in the porridge pot as a joke. He did not give any other information as to other co-conspirators despite being tortured. He also stated that the white powder would cause illness and some discomfort, but the results would not be fatal, and that he only gave a laxative hidden inside the meal. Eustace Chapuy, the Imperial Ambassador to England for Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, would point the finger away from King Henry and towards the family of Anne Boleyn. There is also another theory that the Boleyns were blamed for the suspected poisoning, as Anne allegedly wrote how she wished the end of John Fisher, and that she absolutely detested him. Regardless of this, Roos was never tried for the crime that he was accused of, and he would have no chance to defend himself. On the 28th of February 1531, Henry VIII would inform Parliament of the poisoning, and in this, Roos would be condemned based on Henry's interpretations of the events, rather than being found guilty based on any evidence, confessions or eyewitnesses. The king during this time would also expand the definition of treason, 
and it was considered that murder by poisoning would be automatically classed as treason and be punishable by boiling alive. This was the fate that Roos would be faced with, a horrific and brutal death of pure barbarism. Richard Roos on the 5th of April 1531 was taken to Smithfield for his execution. A contemporary account named the Chronicle of the Grey Friars describes a horrific grisly end and it stated that Roos was tied up in chains, placed in a gibbet and then lowered in and out of the boiling water three times until he was dead. Another account described the horror of Roos's death as, he roared mightily loud and divers women who were big with child did feel sick at this sight of what they saw and were carried away half dead. Other men and women did not seem frightened by the boiling alive but would prefer to see the headsman at work. The sight of seeing a man boiling alive in front of them must have been incredibly traumatising and it's no doubt that some of the crowd would have preferred to see a swift execution such as a beheading. Roos's screams when he was lowered into the pot must have been piercing and blood curdling. There is no doubt that the form of execution that Roos faced was influenced by his profession as a cook. There is an element of mocking involved in the whole incident with the fact he was bored alive to death, definitely being linked to the idea of him being a cook. It has also been suggested that this method of execution was even chosen to reenact the crime, with Roos being the poison that was introduced into the boiling broth. Within a few years of the incident, Henry VIII would get his own way with regards to Bishop John Fisher. He was executed by order of the King during the English Reformation for refusing to accept the King as the supreme head of the Church of England. Fisher's Catholic beliefs and as he was named a Cardinal before his death, cemented his fate on the executioner's block. He would meet his death with dignity and courage and like the execution of the cook, Richard Roos, who was allegedly guilty of attempting to poison Fisher and was guilty of killing two and being bored alive certainly isn't dying with dignity. Once again thanks for watching, to support our channel please make sure to subscribe and once again thanks for watching.